this video is for any baby lock embroidery machine that includes IQ Designer or any brother embroidery machine that includes My Design Center. At first look, this JPEG image looks perfectly fine to bring into Design Center or IQ Designer, but it is not. When you zoom in, you see all of the extra pixels and little gray marks in here. This is not appropriate to bring in as, as a digital JPEG. You may be able to use it by printing it out on an 8x10 sheet of paper in black and white and then scanning that on your scanning frame. Open the Design Center and immediately go into this little section to select the size hoop you will be using. See the little hoop illustration up there? I'm going to choose a 6x6 six six hoop. Say OK. Going to go to the line property section here and I'm going to choose a no sew for this outside of the hoop. Take the bucket and put it on there so that will not be showing sewing. Now to get our image, go back to the line properties, change it to a running stitch which I much prefer over the default of the zigzag stitch. Choose a really dark color you'll be able to see. I'll choose navy blue here and go to OK, then go to the line properties. We're going to open an image from our USB stick. It's in this JPEG folder and um, we're going to choose ornament one. Set that. This isn't into the design center yet. This is just a box around it and the default box is great and it is showing this dark green and the single stitch and there it is in our box so that's looking pretty well so we'll go ahead and set that and you see the red box around the ornament and the not sewing line about the six inch hoop just so you see what happens I'm going to go ahead and size this and anytime you are starting a design you must size it first it this will be grayed out and not an option to do later this is almost a six inch hoop. I hit the size, the proportionate larger. So that's good and you can see that that doesn't line up with the image we brought in. But I'll say okay to that size and I'm going to get rid of the image I brought in because it's confusing now and you do that by moving this and now the background image is no longer a, a something we see. And I want to make sure there's no funny little module sticking here. And from here, this looks pretty good. But let's increase our view, magnify it to the 800%, move the little red box up here. And see, I see a couple little things that maybe I don't want. So I will go to the eraser. I'm going to choose the square one here because that's more of a straight line, the very tiny one and I can move in and erase these little areas that I don't want. I can move around with this red box to see if there's other things that seem out of place. Whoops, that was way too much. So this is your undo box. Move that down a little bit more. I'm thinking what size eraser did I choose? Is this little little eraser. Okay, I'm going to go in here from underneath to try not to go into the actual line. I'll just move around the whole object. Trying to get rid of any funny little nodules that might stick out in the stitch out. But when I scoot around, it looks like the actual ornament is pretty decent. So let's go ahead and save that to our machine. We can save it here. We can save it to a thumb drive. Uh, it takes longer when you've got a lot of things in memory. 
And so we have that, but the first thing I would like to do for this embroidery is actually to use an applique under it. And I just want the outline of the ornament. So that means that we have to erase all the inside lines. We'll get them back because we have already saved this original. So I'm going to go into my eraser. I can start out with the small eraser like I had and go in and erase along the edges, moving the red box here to get to them. And I can also go in and make this a very large eraser when I'm in the center. See, I can see no outlines here and so I can just be crazy and get rid of lots of them when I am not at the outside. So see there's my edge. If I get it just off the screen I can erase big quantities but I wouldn't want to go down there with that big eraser because that is by the outline. I'm getting pretty close here, so I'm going to go make it a much smaller eraser so I can get this more detailed parts erased. So you see when you get really close to this, if you just try and do a single uh, touch, then when if you get something in the outline missing, you can undo and you're just undoing that one touch. Otherwise, if you're moving the stylus around to erase it, you'll have to be undoing a huge large point. So as I get close, I'm going to take it off and touch just a little bit as a time for the more detailed work. Undo that with this black arrow because I got the outline. I'm not going to try and get into that because this is blown up as much as I can and I doubt that that's much of a stitch. Now that the outline for the applique is set, it's ready to go to the next step, touch next. You will notice it's set at a 0 .08 inch stitch length. That's equivalent to a two millimeter, which I think is a little bit short for an applique. So I'm going to Increase that to the equivalent of a 2.5 millimeter by taking it to 0.1 Oops. and set that. We have the arrows here grayed out, meaning that there's a continuous stitch here. And so I'm going to go to the preview. The preview says that we won't be saved, but we can look at it. We could go back now if we wanted to, but since this is perfectly fine, I'm going to set it. And it's been converted into embroidery. I'm going to go to edit and make a copy of it. Make sure that that copy is centered right over it. And go to the color choices and choose to have the first one be an applique material, the second one be the position, 
And now this is set, so it, it would sew the applique first. And to add to it, I choose Add and go back to my Design Center, where I can go down to the Saved Pocket and bring in the last outline we had and set it. So looking at the design, these circles are separate, but these are touching the edge. That could be a problem. I need to enlarge it and to see what is happening with these circles. So right there, if we change the colors, we might not want the circles to have the same outline as the extra because they're a little bit out of shape. So I want to make these be a separate color. How I'm going to do that is with this, I'm going to erase what connects this little circle to the edge. Whoops, I erased kind of a, quite a bit there. I want to just barely erase a spot there and a spot there. And then I might uh, go back in here and choose the pencil and try and redraw that little circle and therefore that will not be the same color as the outline when you're trying just to get a little spot it's a little harder to do that and then I want to bucket the rest of this to the new outline. I need to go back to the green outline and fill in where I have spaces here. do similar over here. Go in and erase this connection. Let's go to the fill. I think I want to start the top with the gold section and I will take this down a little bit smaller. Make this gold, this gold, and this gold. Let's change this to red go in here to a fill since we already have applique and maybe this crackle would be nice. And let's fill that crackle in a couple places down here. It's going to be harder to get into that bottom area so I'm going to zoom in so I have a bigger place to touch that crackle and let's go in and maybe choose a green and change a different selection here and pour that in a few other places Now we'll find out if the fill worked for the circles. I'm thinking that the circles need just to be a fill stitch again. And let's just make them yellow. And 
go give this stripe a yellow. So go back to just take a total look at this ornament and let's go to next to the attributes for these stitches. So we can see right away that there's multiples here. There's the select tool and we could go to the select tool and it could go to all of those or we can paper clip all of that stitch together and make everything the same. Uh, and that because we have the applique I don't want it really as tight as it might have been so I'm going to take this down to a 90 percent but I don't want it to make an outline off it and so I want it off so that's set. Then take the scroll buttons and here we have the red crackle well we know that we had multiples of that so let's paper clip them together and this is such a small ornament we certainly don't want this very large so I'm going to take it down to 50% take the outline off of it and set that I'm going to scroll to the next that's green we did multiple greens let's paper clip that together and do the same thing. Take the percentage down to 50%. Turn off the outline and set that. And here's our triple stitch in black. It's all the lines running through here and as you can see it's no longer the circles. Uh, that 80 is okay. And we'll go to this pink. I'm going to change these back to that same yellow as before. Maybe make it a simpler outline and go through. Simpler outline. So we don't want to really highlight those particular slightly out of place circles. background so now we can preview it and I'll set it and it come in right on top of that applique see everything set up and as we go to the embroidery oops you'll see we have the applique placement, the applique position, and then we start sewing each step. And when we get down to the black and the other yellow, it is the end of the stitching and the outlines. And if we're satisfied with that, we can put it into the machine's memory for embroidery. The final step is to add, go back into my design center, open up where we saved our very first outline, set that. It will have come in with the qualities that were up on here, which should be zigzag, so we'll go next. And no, it's not. We'll change it here to the zigzag stitch. And I would like that to be a four millimeter width. Set that. Preview it. Set it. And now the final stitch around this ornament will be a satin stitch. 